In the shadowy depths of the Cold War, where espionage and clandestine operations shaped the destiny of nations, one man's journey would blur the lines between loyalty and betrayal, secrecy and diplomacy. This is the gripping tale of Viktor Kozlov, a man who lived a double life and stood at the crossroads of history, where the pursuit of power and the yearning for peace collided in the most tumultuous of times. The year was 1942, and the world was engulfed in the flames of World War II. Dr. Viktor Kozlov, a brilliant Soviet physicist, paced nervously in his dimly lit Moscow apartment. His fingers traced the top-secret intelligence report spread out on his wooden table. The Soviets had intercepted coded messages hinting at a mysterious American project, one that could change the course of the war. It was known only as the Manhattan Project. Kozlov had always been fascinated by nuclear physics. He had read extensively about the potential of atomic energy and the destructive power it could unleash. Now, with the war raging and rumors of an American effort to harness this power, his curiosity had grown into an obsession. As he sifted through the reports, Kozlov couldn't shake the feeling that the Americans were continuously a step ahead. He had seen the intelligence reports, but they were fragmented, incomplete. There were references to uranium enrichment, plutonium, and a team of scientists led by a certain J. Robert Oppenheimer. But the details were scarce, hidden behind layers of code and secrecy. Kozlov knew he had to uncover the truth behind the Manhattan Project. He believed that if the Soviets could gain access to this American endeavor, they might have a chance to counterbalance the Nazi regime's scientific advancements. Days turned into weeks as Kozlov immersed himself in his research. He contacted his network of fellow scientists and intelligence sources, seeking any piece of information that could shed light on the American project. Every lead was followed, every rumor investigated, and every contact tested for loyalty. In the midst of his quest, Kozlov encountered a web of conspiracy theories. Some suggested that Nazi spies were already embedded in the Manhattan Project, feeding information back to Germany. Others believed that the Americans were close to achieving the unthinkable, a weapon of mass destruction that could alter the course of the war. Kozlov felt a sense of urgency gnawing at him. He knew that time was of the essence. One fateful evening, as he pored over documents and codes, Kozlov received an unexpected visit from a fellow scientist, Dmitry Petrov. Dmitry had an air of caution about him, and he spoke in hushed tones. Victor, Dmitry began, I've heard whispers of an opportunity that might get you closer to the truth. Kozlov's eyes widened with intrigue. Tell me more, Dmitri. Dmitri leaned in closer. There's talk of sending a Soviet scientist to the United States for scientific collaboration. It could be a way to infiltrate American scientific circles and learn more about the Manhattan Project. Kozlov's heart raced. The idea was both audacious and perilous, but it offered the potential breakthrough he desperately needed. Who is the candidate? he asked. Dmitri lowered his voice further. You, Victor, you're the most qualified. Your expertise and curiosity make you the perfect candidate. If you accept, you'll need to assume a new identity, pose as an innocent visiting professor, and establish connections within the American scientific community. Kozlov nodded slowly, understanding the gravity of the situation. He knew he had no choice but to accept the mission. The fate of the Soviet Union, and perhaps the world, rested on his shoulders. With a determined look in his eyes, Kozlov replied, I'll do it, Dmitri. I'll become Professor Ivanov and journey to America. I will uncover the secrets of the Manhattan Project and ensure that the Soviets are not left behind. And so, the die was cast. Dr. Viktor Kozlov would embark on a perilous journey into the heart of the United States, assuming a new identity and risking everything to uncover the truth behind the Manhattan Project. 
Little did he know that this journey would challenge not only his scientific acumen, but also his loyalties and principles in ways he could never have imagined. New York City, 1942. Victor Kozlov, now assuming the identity of Professor Ivanov, arrived in the bustling heart of the United States. With a cover story as a visiting Soviet scientist interested in American research, he took up residence in a modest apartment near Columbia University. His academic pursuits were a front for his true mission, to unravel the mysteries of the Manhattan Project. The American scientific community was a realm of innovation and discovery. Kozlov marveled at the openness with which researchers shared their ideas and findings, a stark contrast to the secretive nature of his homeland scientific endeavors. He attended conferences and lectures, engaging in discussions with his American colleagues and slowly earning their trust. One evening, after a lecture on nuclear physics, Kozlov found himself at a small gathering of scientists in a dimly lit bar near the university. Among them was Dr. Richard Stevens, a jovial physicist with a penchant for storytelling. Over drinks, Kozlov struck up a conversation with Stevens, probing for information about the Manhattan Project without revealing his true intentions. Richard, he began, I've heard whispers about a project, a scientific endeavor of great importance. They call it the Manhattan Project. Do you know anything about it? Stevens paused for a moment, gauging Kozlov's sincerity. The Manhattan Project, eh? That's a term you don't hear every day. It's a classified project, my friend. Very hush-hush. But I've heard rumors. Kozlov leaned in closer, his curiosity piqued. Rumors, you say? What kind of rumors? Stevens lowered his voice. Well, they say it's something big, something to do with atomic energy. They've got a team of top-notch scientists working on it, led by a fellow named Oppenheimer. It's all quite mysterious, and I've heard it's based in multiple secret locations. Kozlov's heart raced. The information was tantalizing, but it was still vague. He pressed further. And do you think there's any truth to these rumors? Stevens chuckled, taking another sip of his drink. Who's to say? I reckon it's best not to ask too many questions, my friend. Some secrets are meant to stay that way. Kozlov nodded, concealing his excitement. He had made a breakthrough, a name, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and confirmation of the project's connection to atomic energy. But the secrecy surrounding the Manhattan Project was formidable. He needed more. In the weeks that followed, Kozlov continued his dual life as Professor Ivanov. He frequented scientific gatherings, built relationships with American scientists, and gathered more tidbits of information about the project. The picture was slowly coming into focus, but the specifics remained elusive. As he delved deeper, Kozlov became aware of a growing paranoia within the American scientific community. Whispers of espionage and security breaches circled like vultures. The fear of Nazi spies infiltrating the Manhattan Project had reached a fever pitch. One evening, Kozlov received a cryptic message from Dmitri back in Moscow. The Nazi threat is real, the message read. Be cautious, Victor. They may be closer than you think. The warning sent shivers down Kozlov's spine. The thought of Nazi spies operating on American soil added a new layer of complexity to his mission. He couldn't afford to be careless. As Kozlov continued his pursuit of information, he knew that he was treading on treacherous ground. The Manhattan Project was like a puzzle, and each piece he gathered brought him closer to unraveling its secrets. But with the specter of Nazi espionage looming, he had to proceed with utmost caution knowing that the consequences of failure were not only personal, but could also shape the outcome of the war itself. Months had passed since Viktor Kozlov, under the guise of Professor Ivanov, had arrived in New York City. His apartment near Columbia University had become a hub for his research, 
with walls adorned with mathematical equations and maps charting the Manhattan Project's rumored locations. But he knew that time was running out, and he needed to get closer to the heart of the American scientific community. One evening, as the sun dipped below the Manhattan skyline, Kozlov received an unexpected visitor in his apartment. It was Vladimir Petrov, a high-ranking official from the Soviet intelligence agency, the NKVD. Petrov's presence signaled a shift in the mission. Victor, Petrov began, your dedication to uncovering the Manhattan Project's secrets has not gone unnoticed. We have decided to take your mission to the next level. Kozlov's curiosity was piqued. What do you mean, comrade? Petrov explained. We've arranged for you to attend an international scientific conference in Chicago next month. It will be a gathering of some of the world's brightest minds, including American scientists. This is your chance to establish yourself as a reputable scientist and gain access to the inner circles of the American scientific community. Kozlov understood the gravity of the situation. Attending the conference would provide him with an unparalleled opportunity to gather information and establish connections. However, it also meant exposing himself to a wider audience, including potential Nazi spies. Are we certain that this won't raise suspicions? Kozlov asked, his concern evident. Petrov nodded. We've taken precautions. Your cover as Professor Ivanov has been well established and your academic credentials are impeccable. We have also ensured that your background checks out. You will be attending as a legitimate scientist. Kozlov agreed to the plan and preparations for the conference began. He immersed himself in his studies, refining his knowledge of nuclear physics and atomic energy. The conference, known as the Atomic Science Symposium, was set to be a pivotal moment in his mission. As the days counted down to his departure for Chicago, Kozlov's anxiety grew. He was acutely aware of the risks and the weight of the mission. He knew that his actions could have far-reaching consequences, not just for himself, but for the Soviet Union and the world at large. Finally, the day of the conference arrived. Kozlov, dressed in a finely tailored suit, made his way to the train station where a diplomatic passport and a ticket to Chicago awaited him. The train ride was long and contemplative, with his mind oscillating between excitement and apprehension. Upon arriving in Chicago, Kozlov checked into a downtown hotel that would serve as his base during the conference. The Atomic Science Symposium was a grand affair, with scientists from around the world converging to discuss the latest developments in nuclear physics. Kozlov marveled at the international collaboration, even as he maintained his focus on his mission. Over the course of the conference, Kozlov attended lectures, engaged in heated debates, and forged connections with American scientists. He was careful not to pry too overtly into the Manhattan Project, instead using his charm and knowledge to build trust. One evening, at a reception attended by the cream of the scientific community, Kozlov found himself in conversation with Dr. Helen Johnson, a renowned American physicist. They spoke of their respective research interests, and Kozlov shared some of his expertise in nuclear physics. As the evening wore on, Dr. Johnson leaned in closer and whispered, you know, Professor Ivanov, there are some projects that remain shrouded in secrecy. Take, for instance, the Manhattan Project. It's a subject of great intrigue in our scientific circles. Kozlov's heart skipped a beat. Here was an unexpected opening, a chance to gain insight from an American scientist herself. He replied carefully, The Manhattan Project, you say? It has certainly piqued my interest. What can you tell me about it? Dr. Johnson hesitated for a moment before responding. I can't reveal much, Professor, but I will say this. It's a matter of great national importance. The brightest minds in our country are working on it, and its purpose is, well, let's just say it could change the world. 
Kozlov nodded, masking his excitement. He had taken a significant step closer to unraveling the secrets of the Manhattan Project. But the journey was far from over and the challenges ahead loomed large. As he mingled with the scientific elite, he knew that his true test was yet to come. Chicago, 1942. Viktor Kozlov, alias Professor Ivanov, had successfully navigated the treacherous waters of the Atomic Science Symposium. He had made connections with American scientists, subtly probed for information about the Manhattan Project, and now found himself at a crossroads. The delicate balance of his double life weighed on him like a pendulum swinging between loyalty and espionage. As the symposium continued, Kozlov's interactions with Dr. Helen Johnson deepened. She had become his primary source of information regarding the Manhattan Project. Though she had revealed little, her tantalizing hints had fueled Kozlov's determination to dig deeper. One evening, after a symposium lecture, Kozlov and Dr. Johnson sat in a dimly lit corner of a Chicago bar sipping cocktails. The murmur of conversation and clinking glasses provided a mask of anonymity. Dr. Johnson leaned in, her voice low and conspiratorial. Professor Ivanov, I've heard whispers about a breakthrough in atomic research. They say it's happening right under our noses, but only a select few are involved. They've even established secret research facilities. Kozlov couldn't hide his excitement. Secret research facilities, you say? Tell me more. She hesitated as if gauging the trustworthiness of her newfound confidant. I can't say much, but I've heard rumors about sites in Los Alamos, New Mexico, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington. They're working on something called nuclear fission, and Oppenheimer is at the center of it all. Kozlov's mind raced with possibilities. The locations she mentioned were crucial pieces of the puzzle. It seemed that the Manhattan Project was indeed a vast, covert endeavor involving multiple sites and brilliant minds. Over the following days, Kozlov maintained his cover as a visiting Soviet scientist, attending lectures, presenting his own research, and mingling with American colleagues. Meanwhile, he continued to cultivate his friendship with Dr. Johnson, all the while careful not to reveal his true mission or affiliations. As weeks turned into months, Kozlov's double life became increasingly complex. He juggled his academic pursuits and espionage activities with meticulous precision. He had to balance his loyalty to the Soviet Union with his growing admiration for the openness and collaborative spirit of American scientists. One evening, as Kozlov prepared to meet with his contact, Dmitry Petrov, he noticed a subtle change in Dr. Johnson's demeanor. She seemed more guarded, as if a shadow had fallen over their friendship. Kozlov's instincts went on high alert. When he met with Dmitry, the seasoned intelligence officer confirmed his suspicions. Victor, Dmitry said gravely, there have been reports of increased surveillance on you. We suspect that American counterintelligence has taken an interest in your activities. You must be cautious. Kozlov's heart sank. The noose was tightening and his position had become precarious. He knew he had to tread carefully and make himself less of a target. He thanked Dmitri for the warning and returned to his apartment, his mind racing with the possibilities. In the days that followed, Kozlov took deliberate steps to divert attention from himself. He focused on his academic work, attending fewer gatherings and keeping a low profile. He also discreetly changed his routines and routes, attempting to shake off any potential surveillance. But the pressure continued to mount. It seemed that American counterintelligence was relentless in its pursuit of potential spies. Kozlov's anxiety grew with each passing day, and he couldn't help but wonder if his mission was reaching its breaking point. One evening, as he glanced out of his apartment window, he saw a shadowy figure lurking in the street below. It was a chilling reminder that his double life had consequences. 
and the line between discovery and safety had grown razor thin. As Kozlov wrestled with the ever-present danger, he knew that he couldn't afford to falter. The secrets of the Manhattan Project were within his grasp, and his loyalty to the Soviet Union compelled him to continue. But the game of espionage was a high-stakes gamble, and he was acutely aware that one wrong move could jeopardize everything he had worked so hard to achieve. Chicago, 1943. Viktor Kozlov, known as Professor Ivanov, had been living a double life for over a year. The pressure from American counterintelligence was mounting, and the risks of discovery weighed heavily on his mind. He knew he couldn't afford to falter, but the ever-present danger was starting to take its toll. Kozlov had continued his academic pursuits and maintained his connection with Dr. Helen Johnson, the key source of information about the Manhattan Project. Despite the increased surveillance and suspicion, he was determined to gather more critical details about the project. One evening, in a quiet corner of a library near the university, Kozlov met with Dr. Johnson. Her demeanor was tense, and she leaned in close to speak in hushed tones. Professor Ivanov, we need to be careful. I've heard unsettling rumors. They say that someone is getting too close to uncovering the secrets of the Manhattan Project. Kozlov's heart raced. It seemed that the net was closing in on him. Who do they suspect? he asked, his voice barely a whisper. Dr. Johnson hesitated, then replied, I'm not sure, but I fear that our conversations may have attracted unwanted attention. We must exercise extreme caution. Kozlov knew that the time had come to take drastic measures. He needed to distance himself from the very source of his information, Dr. Johnson, to protect both of them from suspicion. But severing their connection would also mean losing a vital source of information about the Manhattan Project. Over the next few days, Kozlov concocted a plan. He would feign illness, claiming that he needed to return to the Soviet Union for medical treatment. This cover story would allow him to leave Chicago temporarily without arousing suspicion and give him an opportunity to regroup and assess the situation from a safer vantage point. As he prepared to put his plan into action, Kozlov received a coded message from Dmitry Petrov, instructing him to proceed with caution but to continue gathering information about the Manhattan Project at all costs. The message served as a stark reminder of the importance of his mission and the high-stakes nature of espionage. Kozlov, visibly weakened and unwell, informed his American colleagues of his impending departure. He expressed his gratitude for their camaraderie and academic collaboration, assuring them that he would return once he had recovered. On a foggy morning, Kozlov boarded a train bound for the East Coast, the cover story of medical treatment securely in place. He left behind a life in Chicago that had become increasingly perilous and a connection with Dr. Johnson that he hoped to one day rekindle. Arriving in New York City, Kozlov took refuge in a safe house provided by Soviet intelligence. His contact, a fellow agent named Elena, debriefed him on the latest developments in the United States. The situation was dire. American counterintelligence had ramped up its efforts, and the risk of exposure was higher than ever. Kozlov spent weeks recovering from his feigned illness, all the while restless and anxious to resume his mission. He knew that he had left crucial pieces of the puzzle behind in Chicago, and he needed to re-establish himself within the American scientific community. With the support of his handlers in the Soviet Union, Kozlov adopted a new persona, this time as Dr. Mikhail Petrov, a visiting scientist from Eastern Europe, under this alias, he secured a position at a prestigious university in the United States, allowing him to re-enter the world of academia and continue his espionage activities. As he settled into his new life, Kozlov couldn't help but wonder about the fate of Dr. Helen Johnson and the secrets she held about the Manhattan Project. 
He had severed ties with her to protect both of them, but the cost of that decision weighed heavily on his conscience. The espionage game had taken its toll on Viktor Kozlov, but he knew that the pursuit of the Manhattan Project's secrets was far from over. The risks remained high and the challenges ahead were daunting. As he embarked on this new phase of his mission, he could only hope that the sacrifices he had made would ultimately lead to the information that could change the course of the war. Years passed, and the world continued to be engulfed in the horrors of World War II. Viktor Kozlov, now operating under the alias Dr. Mikhail Petrov, had successfully reintegrated himself into the American scientific community. He had secured a position at a prestigious university and was once again in a position to gather information about the Manhattan Project. But the landscape had changed. The war was intensifying, and the Allies were launching major offensives against Axis powers. Kozlov knew that time was running out, and the urgency to obtain critical information about the Manhattan Project had never been greater. His connections with American scientists had grown, and he was now privy to more discussions within scientific circles. The cryptic mentions of the Manhattan Project had evolved into more tangible details. He heard about the development of an atomic bomb and the potential for its use in the war. One evening at a gathering of scientists, Kozlov overheard Dr. Richard Stevens, the same physicist who had first mentioned the Manhattan Project to him, engaged in a heated conversation with another colleague. Richard, we can't keep this secret forever, the colleague argued. The world needs to know about the atomic bomb. We must consider the consequences. Stevens, his voice tinged with frustration, replied, You don't understand the gravity of the situation. The bomb is our ace in the hole. If we reveal it prematurely, it could lead to a dangerous arms race and... Who knows what the consequences would be? Kozlov's heart raced. The conversation had confirmed his worst fears. The Americans were on the brink of completing an atomic bomb, and its potential use in the war was imminent. Over the following weeks, Kozlov redoubled his efforts to gather information about the Manhattan Project. He attended secret meetings, eavesdropped on conversations, and cultivated his contacts. It became increasingly clear that the Manhattan Project was nearing completion, and the Americans were preparing for a momentous test. One evening, he received a coded message from his handler, Elena, who had taken over Dmitry Petrov's role. The message contained alarming news. The Americans were planning to conduct a test of the atomic bomb in the New Mexico desert. The date was set for July 16, 1945. Kozlov knew that this was a critical moment. He had to obtain information about the test and its results. With the support of his American colleagues, he managed to secure a spot at Los Alamos, one of the primary research sites of the Manhattan Project. The days leading up to the test were fraught with tension. Kozlov's cover as a scientist was well established, but the security surrounding the test was unparalleled. He had to tread carefully, for any misstep could expose his true intentions. On the fateful day of the test, Kozlov, along with other scientists and military personnel, gathered in the New Mexico desert. The air was charged with anticipation and anxiety. He watched in awe as the countdown began, and a brilliant, blinding light erupted in the distance. The test was successful, the atomic bomb had been detonated, and its destructive power was beyond comprehension. Kozlov knew that this marked a turning point in the war, and the implications were immense. As he returned to his life as Dr. Mikhail Petrov, Kozlov couldn't escape the gravity of what he had witnessed. The Americans had taken a giant leap in the race to harness the power of atomic energy. He had acquired crucial information, but the knowledge weighed heavily on his conscience. The war continued to rage on, and the devastating atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki would soon follow. Kozlov faced a moral dilemma. 
Should he share the information he had gathered with the Soviet Union, potentially escalating Cold War tensions, or keep it secret, hoping for a peaceful coexistence? The decision weighed heavily on him as he grappled with the profound implications of the atomic age. His journey had brought him closer to the heart of the Manhattan Project, but the choices he made now would shape the course of history in ways he could never have imagined. The year was 1945, and the devastating atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had brought World War II to a cataclysmic end. Viktor Kozlov, still operating under the alias Dr. Mikhail Petrov, had watched with a heavy heart as the world grappled with the horrors of the atomic age. The bombings had not only brought Japan to its knees, but had also underscored the immense power of the atomic bomb. Kozlov knew that the information he had gathered about the Manhattan Project and the successful atomic tests in the New Mexico desert held profound implications for the world. In the aftermath of the bombings, Kozlov received a coded message from his handler, Elena. It contained a simple directive. Return to the Soviet Union immediately. Urgent matters require your presence. With a heavy heart and a sense of duty, Kozlov left his life in the United States behind once again. He boarded a plane bound for Moscow, leaving behind his colleagues and the American scientific community he had infiltrated. The decision weighed heavily on him, for he knew that the information he carried could change the course of history. Upon his return to Moscow, Kozlov was debriefed by Soviet intelligence officers. He recounted his experiences, the details he had gathered about the Manhattan Project, and the events leading up to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The implications of his mission were clear. The Soviet Union needed to accelerate its own atomic research. As Kozlov waited for further instructions, he couldn't help but reflect on the moral dilemmas he faced. The destructive power of atomic weapons had been unleashed, and the world now teetered on the brink of a new era, the Cold War. His role in obtaining information about the Manhattan Project had played a part in shaping this volatile landscape. Weeks turned into months, and Kozlov received orders to continue his work as a scientist while secretly aiding the Soviet Union's own atomic research efforts. He was tasked with sharing the information he had gathered about the Manhattan Project with Soviet scientists, accelerating their progress in developing atomic weapons. As the years passed, Kozlov watched as the Soviet Union made rapid strides in its atomic research program. The arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union escalated, and the world became increasingly divided along ideological lines. The secrecy and paranoia that had characterized the Manhattan Project now extended to both superpowers. Kozlov's double life as Dr. Mikhail Petrov continued, but the weight of his actions and the choices he had made grew heavier with each passing day. He knew that the information he had provided had contributed to the arms race and the tense standoff between East and West. In the midst of the Cold War, Kozlov received a message from his American contact, Dr. Helen Johnson. She had managed to locate him through covert channels, and her message was a plea for peace. She expressed her deep regret for the role she had unwittingly played in the proliferation of atomic weapons and the escalating tensions between their two nations. The message from Dr. Johnson struck a chord within Kozlov's conflicted soul. He had dedicated his life to serving the Soviet Union and had played a pivotal role in the nuclear arms race, but he couldn't ignore the human toll and the potential for catastrophic destruction that hung over the world. As the Cold War continued to cast its shadow, Kozlov found himself at a crossroads. He was torn between his loyalty to his homeland and the realization of the devastating consequences of the atomic age. The decisions he would make in the coming years would shape the destiny of nations, and the burden of his past actions weighed heavily on his shoulders. In the heart of the Cold War, 
Viktor Kozlov faced a reckoning, torn between the world he had helped create and the hope for a future free from the specter of nuclear annihilation. The years rolled on, and the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union deepened. Viktor Kozlov, still operating as Dr. Mikhail Petrov, had become an integral part of the Soviet Union's atomic research program. He shared the knowledge he had gathered about the Manhattan Project, accelerating the Soviet efforts to develop their own atomic weapons. But with each passing day, Kozlov couldn't escape the weight of his actions. He had played a pivotal role in the nuclear arms race, a race that threatened the very existence of humanity. The realization that he had contributed to this perilous situation gnawed at his conscience. One evening, while sitting in his dimly lit Moscow apartment, Kozlov received a coded message from his American contact, Dr. Helen Johnson. It was a risky and clandestine correspondence, a thread of hope in the shadowy world of espionage. Dr. Johnson's message was clear. It was time for a secret meeting. She conveyed her deep regret for the role she had inadvertently played in the nuclear arms race and the devastating consequences it had wrought. She longed for a world free from the specter of nuclear annihilation. Kozlov knew that meeting with Dr. Johnson was a perilous endeavor. The risks of exposure were immense, but the desire for a resolution to the nuclear standoff and a path towards peace compelled him to act. He arranged for a meeting in a discreet location, far from prying eyes. They met in a dimly lit park on a cold Moscow night. Dr. Johnson's face was etched with the weight of her own choices, and her voice trembled as she spoke. Professor Ivanov, I can't bear the thought of the world spiraling into a nuclear catastrophe, she said. We have a shared responsibility for what has happened, and we must find a way to prevent further escalation. Kozlov nodded, his own heart heavy with guilt and determination. I share your concerns, Dr. Johnson. The world teeters on the brink, and we must do whatever we can to avert disaster. Over the course of their clandestine meetings, Kozlov and Dr. Johnson devised a daring plan. They would secretly work together to share information between the two superpowers, fostering communication and understanding in an effort to defuse the nuclear tensions. Their actions were fraught with danger, for they risked the wrath of their respective governments. Yet, driven by a shared vision of a peaceful world, they persevered in their mission, walking the tightrope of espionage and diplomacy. As the years passed, Kozlov and Dr. Johnson continued their covert efforts, they exchanged information on nuclear capabilities, disarmament proposals, and diplomatic initiatives. They played a dangerous game, always aware of the consequences of discovery. Their actions bore fruit. In the late 1950s, amidst the backdrop of the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kozlov and Dr. Johnson's secret communication channels played a pivotal role in preventing a catastrophic nuclear exchange between the United States and the Soviet Union. The world breathed a collective sigh of relief, and their clandestine efforts continued. But the toll on Kozlov was immense. He had lived a life of deception, espionage, and moral ambiguity. The weight of his actions, both as a spy and as a peacemaker, had taken a toll on his health and psyche. In the twilight years of the Cold War, Kozlov found himself reflecting on the choices he had made. He had straddled the worlds of secrecy and diplomacy, espionage and peacemaking. He had witnessed the devastating power of atomic weapons and the fragility of peace. As the Cold War drew to a close, Viktor Kozlov, a man who had played a role in shaping the destiny of nations, knew that his actions had come full circle. The world had been forever altered by the atomic age, and his journey had been one of complexity, sacrifice, and a relentless pursuit of peace in a turbulent world. The Cold War may have ended, but the legacy of those who had lived through its trials and tribulations would endure. 
For Viktor Kozlov, it was a legacy tinged with both regret and hope a testament to the enduring human spirit that sought to transcend the boundaries of conflict and division in pursuit of a better world. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 marked the symbolic end of the Cold War, and the subsequent dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 brought an official close to the era of superpower rivalry. Viktor Kozlov, known to the world as Dr. Mikhail Petrov, had witnessed the tumultuous decades of the Cold War and the eventual thawing of tensions between East and West. As the world transformed, Kozlov, now an elderly man, found himself reflecting on the choices he had made and the role he had played in the turbulent history of the 20th century. He had lived a life of secrecy, espionage, and moral complexity. He had been both a cog in the wheel of the nuclear arms race and a clandestine peacemaker. In the years following the Cold War, Kozlov received an unexpected visitor, an American historian who had uncovered a trove of declassified documents and secret correspondence related to his espionage activities during the Cold War. The historian had pieced together the intricate web of Kozlov's double life and was eager to document his story for posterity. With hesitation and a sense of responsibility, Kozlov agreed to share his experiences. He met with the historian and began to recount the journey that had taken him from the Soviet Union to the United States, from the Manhattan Project to the brink of nuclear catastrophe, and finally, to clandestine efforts for peace. The telling of his story was a cathartic experience for Kozlov. He laid bare the moral dilemmas, the sacrifices, and the burdens he had carried throughout his life. He spoke of his meetings with Dr. Helen Johnson, the American scientist who had become his partner in a secret mission for peace, and the risks they had taken to avert nuclear disaster. As the historian diligently recorded Kozlov's account, he marveled at the complex tapestry of history that had unfolded through one man's choices and actions. Kozlov's story was a testament to the enduring human spirit, a story of individuals who had strived to transcend the boundaries of conflict and division in pursuit of a better world. In the twilight years of his life, Viktor Kozlov found solace in the act of reflection. He had played a role in shaping the destiny of nations, both as a spy and as a peacemaker. He had witnessed the destructive power of atomic weapons and the fragility of peace. And now, as he shared his story with the world, he hoped that it would serve as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the profound consequences of the choices humanity makes in the pursuit of power and peace. As the final chapter of his life unfolded, Kozlov knew that he could not change the past, but he could contribute to a future where the lessons of the Cold War were not forgotten. His legacy would be one of reflection, reconciliation, and a fervent hope that the world would never again face the specter of nuclear annihilation. And so, Viktor Kozlov, a man who had walked the tightrope between espionage and diplomacy, secrecy and peacemaking, passed on his story to the world, a story that would forever be etched in the annals of history as a testament to the enduring human spirit and the quest for a world free from the shadow of the atomic age. Viktor Kozlov, in the twilight of his life, had shared his story with the world through the American historian. His account of espionage, the Cold War, and clandestine efforts for peace had resonated with people around the globe, reminding them of the profound consequences of choices made in the pursuit of power and peace. As Kozlov's story reached a wider audience, it sparked discussions, reflections, and renewed efforts for disarmament and diplomacy. The world had seen the devastating power of atomic weapons, and Kozlov's journey served as a stark reminder of the perils of the nuclear age. In the wake of his revelations, Kozlov received countless letters and messages from people of all walks of life, scientists, politicians, activists, and ordinary citizens 
who were inspired by his story. They shared their hopes for a world free from the specter of nuclear annihilation and their determination to work towards a safer and more peaceful future. One of the most impactful letters came from a group of young students in Moscow who had organized a peace rally in his honor. They held signs that read, Never Again, and Peace, Not Power. Kozlov, frail but moved by their sincerity, attended the rally and addressed the crowd. My dear friends, he began, his voice quivering with emotion, I have lived a life marked by secrecy, choices made in the shadows, and the burden of knowing the consequences of my actions. But I've also seen the resilience of the human spirit and the power of collective hope. Kozlov spoke of his journey, from espionage to clandestine efforts for peace, and how it had shaped his perspective on the world. He emphasized that the lessons of the Cold War should never be forgotten and that the pursuit of peace required vigilance, dialogue, and diplomacy. The students, inspired by Kozlov's message, continued their activism, advocating for nuclear disarmament and promoting peaceful coexistence. Their efforts were echoed by people around the world who had been touched by Kozlov's story. In the years that followed, international disarmament treaties were negotiated and ratified, reducing the stockpiles of nuclear weapons. Diplomatic initiatives and dialogue between nations gained momentum, and the specter of nuclear war began to recede. Viktor Kozlov's legacy was one of reflection, reconciliation, and the enduring hope for a safer world. His journey from the shadows of espionage to the light of peacemaking had left an indelible mark on the course of history. As he looked back on his long and tumultuous life, Kozlov knew that he could not change the past, but he had contributed to a future where the lessons of the Cold War were not forgotten. His story was a message of hope, a reminder that, even in the darkest of times, individuals could make choices that shaped the destiny of nations and that the pursuit of peace was a noble and essential endeavor. And so, as Viktor Kozlov approached the end of his remarkable journey, he did so with a heart filled with gratitude, knowing that he had played his part in a world striving for a future free from the shadow of nuclear annihilation, a future where the lessons of the past would guide humanity towards lasting peace.